I want to talk to you about knowing God and being known by Him. This relationship of knowing God and being known by Him is important for every believer, but it is especially important for leaders who are going to have influence on the lives of other believers. So I hope you'll stick with me as I go through a number of scriptures just to talk with you from my heart. David the psalmist said in Psalms 27, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. So we know David was a tremendous leader. And here he's showing us the passion and the priority of his life. And that passion and priority is to be in God's presence. Not only to be in God's presence, but okay, to use that time in God's presence, not to develop some kind of strategy or okay, to produce some kind of sermon, but to be in the presence of God for the sole purpose of beholding the beauty taking pleasure in God himself, beholding the beauty and the glory of God, and to inquire after his heart. This is what it is said about David. He was a man after God's own heart. Not just a man who had a heart after God, but he was a man who wanted to know the very heart of God. What is in God's heart? What is it that gives God pleasure? And so, as a leader, his priority was the presence of God for the purpose of beholding the beauty of God, taking pleasure in the glory of God, being transformed in that place as he inquired after the heart of God. This needs to be the purpose, the passion, and the priority of every leader. Paul, the apostle, says it this way, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God by faith, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I might obtain to the resurrection from the dead." We know that Paul was a tremendous leader and influencer in the church of Jesus Christ. And this was the priority of his heart, that he might know Christ. When I'm talking about knowing Christ, I'm talking about a relationship that's not a casual friendship. I'm talking about a relationship where one opens their life to another so that that person can deposit something of their life into you so that you are changed by the deposit that they have brought into your life. Paul says, I want to know Christ in that way. I want to know him. I want to gain him. I want to be found in him. I want to be in relationship with Christ. I want to know what it is to have his righteousness. I want to know what it is to have the power of his resurrection. I want to know what it is to fellowship with him in his suffering. I want to, I want to be conformed to him. I want relationship with him to shape me. This was Paul's this was Paul's passion from the be very beginning. He understood that God had set him apart in order to reveal Christ not to him but in him and through him so that Christ would be an example 
of the power, so that Paul would be an example of the power of Christ, okay, that is available to be at work in all believers and how, how much Paul has influenced the church to understand Christ in us, the hope of glory. Jesus Christ prayed this prayer okay, when he was talking to his father in John chapter 17. And he says this in verse 3. Okay, he says, hey, Father, you, you, have given, you have given me the authority to give eternal life okay, to, whoever, to whoever I choose. But this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who you have sent. And, and I've glorified you, God. I've glorified you by, by finishing the work that you gave me to do. I, I came to make you known, Father. And this is eternal life that they might know you. So the eternal life that Jesus Christ came to give to us was not that eternal life that happens okay, after okay, we die something in eternity future. No, eternal life has to do okay, with us dying now and coming, okay, being raised with Christ and coming to know okay, Christ as our life now and coming to know the life of God in us because we are in Christ and coming to know him in a way that he can deposit his very self into us and we are changed and transformed through the relationship. Eternal life is that we might know him and that we might know Jesus Christ, his son. Now, John, who laid his head upon Jesus' breast, okay, gives us some things that will help us to know if we actually know him. He says, by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. In him. But whoever keeps his word, okay, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So Paul, John is saying, this is how we know that we know him. This is how we know that we are in this relationship where he is able to deposit something of his life in us. He is able to deposit his word in us. It is going to change us. It is going to cause a transformation. We are going to open up our hearts to him and we are going to make a place for his word in us and we are going to be changed by that word and we are going to we are going to walk just as he walked, okay? So we don't know that we know him because we have greater Bible knowledge. That's not the knowledge we're talking about. We're talking about knowing in relationship to him where who he is is transforming us so that his word is reshaping us and we are becoming like him. John the Apostle goes on to say in chapter 4, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifest towards us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, and he did, if God so loved us, and we have come to know that love through knowing him, then it ought to transform our lives and we ought to love even as he loved. This is how we can know that we are actually knowing him. 
We are in relationship with him because it's transforming the very motivation of our heart from self-interest and self-centeredness to becoming love, even as he loved us and gave his son, even as Christ loved us and gave his life for us. Again, in 1 John, okay, the apostle says, this is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin. Okay, He's saying, you, you need to know this about God. If you're going to be in relationship, if you're going to know the joy of relationship with him, if you're going to know his eternal life abiding in you, then you need to know that God is light. And wherever God is, Okay, the very nature and character of God will illuminate everything that's around you so that every thought and motive of your heart will be exposed before him. Now, if you want to hide that, you can hide that, but you're not going to be in relationship with him. If you want to be re in relationship with him, you have to be transparent and open before him. Those who are in relationship with him will, under will experience this uncomfortable reality of exposure in his presence. But that exposure is not to condemn us. That's what John says in John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that he, he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life, this relationship with God. And he said, God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is, having the transforming power of God's eternal life within them, changing their lives and setting them free from all of the way that sin has corrupted us to make us self-centered in order that we can be restored to the image and the likeness of God. So he did not send his son into the world, nor did his son come into your life for the purpose of condemnation, but that through him we could be saved. Okay? But this is the condemnation. This is what will keep us locked in sin and in bondage to darkness. Okay? This is the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light. They, they like what is hidden under the darkness. They don't want to be exposed. Men love darkness rather than light because what it exposes is that their hearts, their minds, their thoughts, their motives are all self-centered. But he said, whoever is, is, is a child of the truth, he comes to the light. Someone who truly wants a relationship with God, okay, he actually runs to the light so that okay, everything can be exposed because what he wants is that everything should come into alignment with who God created us to be. So here back in, in, in uh, 1 John, he says... God is light. If you're gonna if you're gonna walk in, in in relationship with Him, if you're gonna have fellowship with Him, then you're gonna have to embrace the reality of this exposure. Okay. But listen, if we walk in in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with Him, and whatever is exposed by the light will be cleansed by his blood. Oh, he is faithful and just. If we say we don't have any sin, if we try to hide that reality, we don't need this, okay? We're just, we're just deceiving ourselves. But, okay, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, not just to forgive us of our sins in relationship to him, but cleanse our consciousness of all sense of guilt and shame so that we can live in open fellowship with him. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. Please, 
please, as leaders, do not lead your people to book knowledge. Lead them to a true knowledge of who God is. Lead them to a true relationship with knowing him and knowing what it is to be known by him. In Hebrews, he's talking about okay, being diligent to enter into this the rest of, of believing what God has promised, believing that that in, in, in the in the destiny and the inheritance that is ours in Christ. And he says, for the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So this is saying it in a different way. If you're going to be in fellowship with God and you're going to allow God's life to enter into you and you're going to allow him to speak his word into your heart, you need to know his word is a sharp two-edged sword and it's going to pierce right into the 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 the, the depths of who you are it's going to it's able to divide and dis, it be, it's able to discern between soul what is of the soulish devil and what is of the spirit and it it is a discerner of the thoughts and the te- intents of the heart this is so important our relationship with god goes to the depth of who we are the depth of our identity for as a man thinks in his heart so is he so this is going to the the very our very sense of identity and the very beliefs which which direct our lives okay and This relationship with God allows this exposure to come. It says, okay, all, all there, there is no creature hidden from his sight and all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. He sees, he sees our thoughts. He sees our beliefs. He sees our motives, okay? But what's important is for us to allow him to come in with his word and go depth into the depths of who we are and, and separate out that which is of the, of the soulless nature and that which is of the spirit, that which is coming okay, from okay, who we think we are and that which is in alignment with how he sees us and who he knows us to be. And it goes right down to the very, into the very depths Okay, of the thoughts, the deep thoughts and motivations of our heart. Ah, oh, this is so good. I love this relationship with God. We need to bring people into a relationship with the Holy Spirit, okay? And and a desire and a longing to pursue this relationship with God so that he is able to get down into the depths of our very hearts and he is able to do his transforming work because we want him to bring we want us to bring him into the fullness of our identity and the fullness of our inheritance and we don't want to be left out we don't want to be left out <laughs> okay here we are in galatians Galatians, I believe we're in chapter three, and it says, and because you are sons of God, God has sent forth his, the spirit of his son into your hearts, okay? Another, another place it says, his spirit witnesses with our spirit, I believe it's Romans chapter eight, that we are sons of God. In other words, he wants us to know who we are. He wants us to know how heaven sees us. He wants us to know how we are known in heaven, Okay? He wants us to know that we are sons of God. But not only that, and this has been so important in my life, he sends the spirit of his son into my heart and he gives me the ability to embrace that I am a son. And he gives me the ability to open my affections in relationship with the father so I am able to respond to him as a dearly loved son. Okay? So that from my heart, depth in, in, in that place where my thoughts and motivations are, from that very depth of my heart, I now know who I am. In that very deep place 
where my beliefs are formed. I am a believer. Hallelujah. In that place, deep place where knowing takes place. I know I am a child of God so that from that deep place of my heart, I begin to cry to him and open my affections to him and say, Abba, Father, oh, I love you. Abba, Father, how I want to be like you. Abba, Father, how I thank you for loving me and transforming me. I thank you for this love that has called me your very own, okay? And, and so now Paul is actually going somewhere with, with this. And, and so he says, okay, in verse eight, but then indeed, when you did not know God, you served by nature, okay, those things that are not gods. And he's, he's talking about religion, He's talking about religion and all of the rules and the regulations of religion and all of the duties and performances of religion and all the ways that we try to somehow okay, uh, perform and earn and deserve in our relationship with God. Somehow, with whatever the gods are, we're seeking somehow to position ourselves so that we are in alignment with their favor. And he says, that's, that's what you came out of, but now you have come into a relationship with God where you have received his spirit into the depths of your heart okay and you know God oh even more than that you know God you are you are known by him and you are coming to know how God knows you you are coming to know who you are in the father's eyes you're coming to know how heaven sees you and you are coming to to live in such a way as to align yourself with who you truly are. And you're experiencing that transforming work of the revelation of the Holy Spirit within you. So you're beholding him and you're beholding in his eyes who you are. And you are being changed from glory to glory as you are in that disclosure place, in the place of his presence. He says, you've come to know that reality. Why would you let anybody take you back to religion? Why would you let anybody take you back to the, the powerless, meaningless thing of rules and regulations, duties and observances when you have experienced this transforming relationship of knowing God, but even more than that, of being known by him? Oh, okay. Believers, this is what we're called to. And if you're not under leadership that's bringing you into this, you need to find leadership that will teach you how to pursue this relationship with God, this transforming relationship of knowing him and being known by him. I'm not talking about okay, being taught right doctrines. I'm talking about being brought into right relationships. Behold what manner, this is 1 John chapter 3, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. I want you to come to know the depths of this love. I want you to come into a revelation of this love. Okay, I want, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen your heart so you can grasp the reality that Christ lives in your heart. I'm now in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul's prayer, that you can, you can grasp the reality that God has placed his Son in your heart so that in doing that, you have now become a child of God because because the Spirit of Christ lives in you, okay? And I want you to be rooted in that. I want your identity to be firmly rooted in that. I want, I want your, your purpose and your destiny, okay, and, and your motivation in life to all be feeding off of that. I want, I want your whole life to be about exploring the greatness and the depth and the breadth and the height of what that love actually means. I want you to come to know that. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called heaven's calling us heaven is calling us our father is calling us jesus is calling us okay we are the sons of god he says behold what manner of love that we should be called the children of god therefore the world does not know us okay there's a reality within us in the spirit 
okay? For us who live according to the Spirit, who we are in the Spirit, who we have been born again into by the Spirit, okay? There's a reality that we are now the children of God. This is, this is who we are. But the world doesn't know that, and, and, and that's just simply, okay, you would expect that because the world, the world didn't accept him. Jesus came into the world. He was the very son of God. But because he was clothed in, the, in humanity, they measured him by human measurement and they thought of him through human reasoning and they never saw, they, they couldn't get past their religious mindsets and their natural thinking to be able to see the glory of who was in him, the glory that was revealed on the Mount of Transfiguration, the glory that was revealed when the, when the disciples were out with him in the boat and he was able to come man, the winds and the wind. They never saw the reality of the Son of God behind his humanness. That's why people failed to come out into the streets when he went into the town of Nazareth because they were most affected by this. So he couldn't do miracles because they didn't show up for the miracle service. Behold, we are the sons of God. Okay? Behold the love that he has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. But beloved, now we are the children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. For us, it's, it's still behind a veil. We have a hard time looking past our own flesh. We have a whole hard time looking past our own failures and our own weaknesses and our, our own areas of ignorance. And, and, and we, we have a hard time. It's just, no, it's, it's veiled to us. Okay? It has not yet been revealed. We haven't come into the full revelation of it. Okay? But we know that when he is revealed, there is a day coming when Jesus Christ will be revealed to us. Okay? And in that day, Okay? We will be like him. That is the goal of our faith. We will be like him. Okay? We will be, we will, we will be ruled by the motivation of love. We will be purely love even as he is love. We will be the full manifestation of the glory of the Father even as he is love the full manifestation of the image and likeness of the Father. We will be fully restored. And he says, if that's your hope, if you're actually coming into this relationship of knowing God and being known by God and knowing yourself as he knows you, okay, those people who are in that relationship, they purify themselves even as he is pure, okay? They're on a quest. They want to stand in his glory. They want to stand in his presence. They want to behold his beauty. They want to inquire of his heart. They want to know how he thinks. They want to know how what motivates him, and they want to become like him. They don't want anything in their life, anything in their thought patterns, anything in their perspectives, anything in their motivations that are not like him. Those who are really caught up in this relationship with God, they are purifying themselves even as he is is pure. Now, we come to this final scripture, okay, and Jesus is is talking, this is during his inaugural sermon where he's laying out the, the kingdom of God, he's laying out the teachings for us to live our lives by, and he says in chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Okay? It's not a person's lip service as far as their commitment to his lordship. It's the reality of how their hearts have been reshaped so that they from their heart do the will of the Father. He said, many to me will say in that day, Lord, Lord. So listen to the lip service, okay? You are the owner and master of our lives. You are the owner and master of our lives. Have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name 
and done many wonderful things in your name, many wonderful, mighty works in your name. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? They, okay, they had, they had okay, experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but that's, okay, they, had, they had tasted the power of the age to come. Okay, and they had, they had given themselves to that. That's what they were going after. Okay? They, were, they were prophesying. And they were they were casting out demons, and okay, they were they were doing many miracles, but you see, okay, they weren't doing it from a place of knowing Him, and knowing their identity in relationship to Him. No, 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 no. Their identity was being pursued. Their identity was being formed. Their identity was being found in the works that they were doing. Their identity was in ministry. Their identity was in popularity. Their identity was in success. Their identity was building their ministries. Their identity was not in their relationship with him. Their identity was not in knowing him and being known by him in a pursuit to be like him. And Jesus says to them, even though they had done all of these mighty things, he says, and it's the saddest thing, he says, depart from me. He says, I never knew you. This was never about relationship with me. This was never about knowing me. This was never about knowing who you are in my heart and in my eyes. This wasn't coming out of your identity as my child. This wasn't coming out of your motivation of knowing that you're loved and longing to be an expression of love. No, what was motivating you was very much self-interest and not a love for me. I never knew you. So depart from me. Because all of those things that you do, however you want to define them, you want to define them as serving me, okay? They weren't serving me at all. They were self-serving. They were self-interest. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I'm speaking to leaders today. We do not want our relationship with God to be about our ministry, okay, or our performance, or our gifting, okay, or our calling. We want our relationship with God to be about knowing him and being known by him so that okay, we are pursuing the depth of a life transformed through fellowship with him. Okay? And we want the effect of our life, you see, because when people are ministering and it's all about self-interest and it's all about building their kingdoms and it's all about promoting their ministries, they are actually drawing people to them. They want people to need them. They want people to look to them. They want people to say things about them. They want people to, to press likes and they, and they, and they, want, <laughs> they want people to promote them. Okay? And it's all about them. But leaders, the end result of our ministry is, is like Paul, is like the apostle, yeah, no, sorry, is like John the Baptist said, okay? okay? Our ministry reaches its height of success when we so decrease, okay? And he so increases so that people are not, okay, okay? <laughs> they're not running after us at all. They're not needy of us at all because they have found the transforming power of relationship with him. Okay. 
That is what I want my life to be about. And if I have an influence on anyone that is moving into leadership, that's the influence that I want to have. May God take this word and may this word find a home in you so that your, your priorities, your pursuit, your passion, and your purpose is so in alignment with what I've talked to you today, so in alignment with what his heart is for you, that this word would actually say, I'm at home living in you. I'm at home living in you. Oh, I pray God's richest blessing on you. Thank you so much.